All right, we are doing lesson 8.3, use properties to identify parallelograms. Um, we're digging into four new theorems. Um, I would suggest as we read these, maybe having a parallelogram drawn to the right, and we could do a little labeling just to kind of have a visual for these theorems. So the first one says, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, so if this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Um, the second theorem, 8.8, .8, if both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, so that means if this angle and this angle are congruent, and this angle this angle are congruent. Look at how I've utilized the loops. It's kind of the same way I utilize the tick marks. Um, but if we're seeing those opposite angles are congruent, then it is a parallelogram. Next, 8.9. If one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent and parallel. So I already have the sides labeled as congruent. The added thing is just one pair not only needs to be congruent, but also parallel. So I'm going to add my little arrows showing that they are parallel. Um, as long as you have one pair that is both congruent and parallel, then it is a parallelogram. And then finally, 8.10, the diagonals of the quadrilateral bisect each other. Bisect means they're cutting each other in half. So I have one diagonal drawn. The second diagonal that I draw is going to cut in half those two uh, lengths, okay? Perhaps instead of just putting one tick mark, I've already used the one tick mark, and I've already used the two tick marks, so maybe I'll do three, right? Because I don't want to suggest that they equal the same thing as the sides. I just truly do not know. And then for the other diagonal that is being bisected, I'll do four. Okay, so it looks kind of, it looks a little different, but that's telling me that these two pieces of the diagonal are congruent. These are also congruent because they were bisected. And so that's kind of how it breaks down in one parallelogram, how it would look. So let's get into some examples. It says, explain how you know that a quadrilateral QRST is a parallelogram. Um, immediately, I am seeing that they are giving me some angles. I see angle T and angle R equal the same thing. They are also opposite angles. So I can refer back to theorem 8.8. .8. which tells me that opposite angles are congruent. And that tells me that it's a parallelogram. Let's check out another example. Explain how you know that quadrilateral QRST is a parallelogram. I am seeing 5x and 5x. They are on the same diagonal. This diagonal is being bisected by the other diagonal, meaning that these are congruent, right? We see that they are the same value. It's a diagonal being bisected by another diagonal. And um, same thing here. This diagonal is 3x and 3x. It has also been bisected um, by the other diagonal. So this is theorem 8.10, which tells me that um, the diagonals are bisecting each other, which proves, um, well, they're bisecting each other, they are congruent, therefore it is a parallelogram. Okay. So let's uh, flip the page. Um, on the top of the page, you'll see reference to the theorems that we just practiced on the page before. And this is just some more uh, 
practice problems just like the ones we did. Which theorem can be used to show that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram? This looks almost identical as the one from the previous page. I see six and six on the same diagonal. I see nine and nine on the same diagonal. Those are diagonals that are being bisected. This is theorem 8.10, right? That the diagonals are bisecting each other. This is a parallelogram. I'm looking at uh, question two next. I see a tick mark here and a tick mark here showing me that the opposite sides are congruent. I'm also seeing that the left side is 26 and the right side is 26. So I just added some more tick marks. Um, this is theorem 8.7. And 8.7 tells me that both pairs of the opposite sides are congruent. So this is a parallelogram. All right, number three, I'm seeing there's a loop here and a loop here. These are congruent to each other because of those loops. I also see 71 and 71 degrees. So I'm putting two loops because those are also congruent. These are opposite angles in the shape that are congruent. This is theorem 8.8. .8. This is telling me that the shape is a parallelogram. And then finally, I see 15 and 15 for question four. So these sides are congruent. And I also see the little arrows here. So at least one pair of my sides are both congruent and parallel. So this is theorem 8.9. So this question does a really nice job of giving you a visual of all four of those theorems. And so here's some of the, you know, theorems that make parallelograms um, or make a quadrilateral a parallelogram. All right. Um, so I'm seeing some expressions here. So this is probably going to involve a little bit more algebra. Let's get into it. It says that, uh, example two, for what value of X is quadrilateral FGHJ a parallelogram? Um, I'm seeing parallel sides. I'm also seeing, I mean, I would assume for this to be a parallelogram, if I know these sides are parallel, then they must also be congruent. So let's try to figure out, let's create an equation um, using that congruency. Okay, I just put an equal sign between them because if they are congruent, then we can take those two expressions and put an equal sign between them. Um, I'm seeing some parentheses. I notice an X on the left and an X on the right of the equal sign. Perhaps for good practice, we could draw a line to create two sides for the expression. I'm going to start with doing some distribution. Um, the reason being that I want to put some like terms together. So I want to put these X's together and to do so, I just got to get rid of the parentheses. So if I subtract 4x on both sides, on the left, I will have x plus 2. And on the right, I will be left with just an 8. Next, I'll subtract 2 on both sides. So I will have x equals 6. So I believe x should equal 6, but let's just check our work. I would plug x into both equations. So I'm plugging 6 in to both equations, and let's see if they end up equaling the same thing. So starting on top, 5 times 6 is 30, and I add the 2 on, so that gives me 32. Hopefully this is also going to give me 32. I have 4 times 8 because 6 plus 2 is 8, and then 8 times 4 is 32. So this answer checks out, x equals 6. Let's go ahead and flip the page, and we have one last example to do. Okay, let me just turn this a little bit more comfortably. 
All right, um, exercises, for example, two and three. In the diagram at the right, what value of x makes the quadrilateral a parallelogram? So let's check that out. Um, so I'm noticing some diagonals here. I'm also noticing something kind of interesting in that um, they're using x for both this diagonal as well as for this diagonal. So we got to figure out what x equals, and then we can plug it in and check if it works for both of these. Um, so I say I'm kind of liking the one that I've outlined in purple. So let's set up an equation with this. I'm seeing 4x, and I'm also seeing an arrow that's telling me 6x minus 1. So 6x minus 1 equals 4x and let's use that. So I'm going to start with getting the x's together. So I'm going to subtract 6x on both sides. I'll have negative 1 equals negative 2x. And then to get that x all by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, which the negatives cancel out, giving me 1 half. And so I'm seeing x equals 1 half. Um, so now we just plug it into each of the things, right? And hopefully they both end up um, equaling the same. So like, for example, over here I have 4x. I'm timesing 4 times a half because that's what x equaled. So this diagonal is a 2. This one, 6 times 1 half and then minus 1. 6 times a half is 3 minus 1 and 3 minus 1 is 2. So for the purple, it checks out, but let's check out the orange. I'm seeing it's an X, so let's plug X in. Um, one half plus one, I'm gonna just make it 1.5. And then two times 1.5 will be three. The way to think of that is two times two would be four, and two times one would be two, so being that 1.5 is the number in between 1 and 2, the answer would be a 3. And then this is where I kind of was very surprised. This is just an x, so that's telling me that this side is just 1 half. So the fact that 1 half worked for the purple diagonal, but when I went to check it with the orange diagonal, this, di this half of the diagonal was 3. This one was just a 1 half. So negative or uh, so x equaling one half actually does not work um so what we can say is this is not not a parallelogram okay because the diagonals ended up not bisecting each other one of them did but the other one did not um we have the um the theorems kind of listed out here a little bit more condensed, less words and simplified pictures. So use this to help you as you get started with your practice.